Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Joining me now is the one and only Andrea Belke. She is the host of People Now, and of course, she is a three-time Survivor veteran. Welcome, lovely. So nice to be here. So and I time. love talking about Survivor, so it's perfect. Yes, you are our in-house Survivor expert. Mm -hmm. So who better to join me in this conversation? Because on the line right now is a Survivor legend. He's also a current mentor on Island of the Idols and a good friend of Andrea's, Boston Rob. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you guys doing? We're fabulous. Wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> thanks so much for phoning in today because this season you're not competing. Instead, you and Sandra are mentoring selected contestants one-on-one -on, -one on Island of the Idols. So I'm curious to know what your reaction was when you walked up on the beach and saw the huge Boston Rob statue. Did that kind of get you in the feels a little bit? Yeah, I, did, I definitely don't need any ego boost while I'm out there. <laughs> that's for sure. All I got to do is, you know, walk out to the beach and see a 25 foot large head of myself. <laughs> <laughs> like your own Mount Rushmore. And you're there with Sandra. Now you two are very different players, but what are some of the things you really agree on when it comes to giving out advice? You know, Sandra and I go, uh, Sandra and I go back a long time. Like fundamentally, we play the game very differently, but we both come from that old school mentality where, you know, get an alliance, keep it together, and be loyal to it. Uh, when it comes to challenges, playing in challenges, Sandra is kind of as least as possible as good for her. And I'm more of like, you know, you got to get in there and do it. I think uh, for the most part, we agree on the advice that we give the contestants, but there's definitely times where you're going to see two different trains of thought. Yeah, what would you say is the biggest difference between you and Sandra when you give out advice? I think, like, personally, like, you know, we played together, Andrea. Like, I'm all about promoting teamwork, unity in the beginning, staying together, keeping the tribe strong. And from day one, when Sandra gets out there, I think she's out for her and her only, mm. which, you know, she's won twice with it, so she has a pretty good social game, and that approach works. But, you know, you got to get through the beginning stages. And for someone like me, I need a team around me to be able to do that. Yeah, you need a team around you. You need a buddy system. You need all of those things that did work on our first season. <laughs> well, also, last week you mentored Vince, who succeeded in your challenge, and he won himself an immunity idol. But it didn't do much for his game. So why don't we have a look? Third person voted out. Vince, need to bring me a torch? Vince is leaving with an idol in his pocket. Vince, the tribe has spoken. It's so crazy he went home with an idol in his pocket. Who would ever do that? Right? Why would you just play the idol? Yeah. I went home with an idol in my pocket. Why? Because you feel safe. I don't know. It's hard. Okay. Um, yeah. Boss and Rob, what was your reaction when he didn't play his idol and he could have just saved himself? I felt bad for him. I mean, first of all, he took the risk to be able to get the idol, took the chance going into the other tribe's camp, and then once he got it, that idol was only good for two tribal councils. So it was either that one or the next one. And, like, you know, I play poker, so I understand risk versus reward. <laughs> I think, you know, playing the idol incorrectly would have been a lot less hurtful than going home with it in his pocket. I so agree. In that situation, you got to play it. Even if you think your name's on the block at all, you got to play it. Yeah, did you expect to see him get voted out so soon? I was kind of bummed to see him go because yeah. he was a really fun character. Yeah, I liked Vince, you know, but that Survivor, you never know. You never know. And it's usually when you feel the safest is when you're going home. Mm -hmm. That's really true. God, that sounds so I, The times I was blindsided, I felt really safe and yeah. really confident. So wow. you know something's up. <laughs> Honestly, what you guys do out there is so impressive. And also, uh, Rob, you know, we told the Twitterverse that you were coming in today via Skype. And so we have a couple of fan questions for you. So Kieran yeah. actually wants to know, do you believe that Vesepia is an underrated winner? Oh, Vesepia, going back to the uh, fourth season, the first time I played, you know, Vesepia hasn't come back and played at all. I don't know if that's because she doesn't want to or, you know, like, uh, what's going on with that. I think uh, she played a drastically different style of game than I like. You know, she was very under the radar, which worked for her and her in that uh, fourth season. But nowadays, I think people would pick up on that, and I don't think she'd last as long. Mm. 
Mm. Interesting. Well, we have another fan question, and I would love to get your take as well on this, Andrea. A Survivor fan, Courtney, started auditioning for Survivor 12 years ago. So she tweeted, there are times I want to give up and forget about it. What advice do you have to give to fans who love this game and who want to play? So Rob, we'll take it from you first, and Andrea, we'd love to get your uh, advice as well. Yeah, so I mean, if you applied 12 years ago, there's a chance that you're in a different spot in your life now than when they first saw that audition tape. So reapply, try again, you know, and tell them what's new about you right now. And if you've been applying every year for the last 12 years, if that's the case, then you got to switch it up. I mean, what, what you're doing is not working. So... The main thing is you have to be yourself when you apply to be on the show. I think that's paramount, but they want to see the heightened, most exaggerated version of yourself that you can give them. You get one chance to make an impression, so go big. I want to know, Rob, what was your hook for your audition video? I applied like uh, back when we used to send in VHS tapes. Okay, <laughs> that's what and. Uh, I was just after work one day, I was hanging out and I had this whole scheme planned where I was going to be, we had a second refrigerator in our garage and I was going to be in the refrigerator hanging out and I tried to fit myself into the freezer and I couldn't fit. My mom was videoing it and that alone became a hilarious thing, me trying to stuff myself in the refrigerator and I don't know, for whatever reason, I was. they gave me a second call back and I was able to make an impression that you know, they gave me a shot. Incredible. Yeah. And then, Andrew, you got accepted first time you auditioned. Yeah, first time I auditioned, sent a tape in. I think it also was, I don't, know if it, I don't think it was VHS, but it was definitely a DVD, okay. a physical thing right. that we mailed in. Yeah. But I leaned into the farm girl route. So I was on the farm, riding my horse, catching pigs. Like, I did the whole thing. You need to find, like, what makes you special and, like, really lean into that because mm. the casting wants to see characters. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Courtney, best of luck, so keep at it. Mm -hmm. You've had advice from uh, two veterans here, so hopefully we'll see you on a future season. Right now, though, why don't we take a look at the preview for tonight's episode. Here it is. When romance blossoms... Ooh, uh, this is perfect. <laughs> Dean and Chelsea, that's something that has to get squashed. You must protect your secrets. One of you must come to the island of the idols. Whoever goes can blow up my game while flying blind. With showmance. Boss and Rob, what do you make of the possible showmance between Chelsea and Dean? Because you had a showmance with Amber, ended up marrying her, it worked out. Um, but what do you think it takes to pull off a successful showmance? Showmances are dangerous. <laughs> I mean... As soon as anybody sees you as a couple or a pair out there, it's just another reason to vote you off. So coming from me, this may <laughs> seem like crazy advice, but avoid them at all costs if you want to win the game. Uh, I think that, you know, it definitely puts a mark on you that you don't need out there. So... I'd steer clear of them. Just mm. cuddle at night when no one's watching. But isn't just everyone like, always watching? Do you have cameras on you 20? Well, yeah, exactly. You shouldn't like... really have a showman. Yeah. Because it's target on your back. I know, but here's the thing. If Boston Rob didn't have his showman, he wouldn't have that really cool painting in the background yeah. there, would he, right? Yeah. Four adorable they, they daughters. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Rob. Those showmances never work out. <laughs> well, we're really glad that, you, that yours did. But if you had to give two or three tips to a newbie player who wants to play Survivor, what would those two or three tips be? Uh, first night you're out there, don't go to sleep. That's when most mm -hmm. of the alliances are made. Stay up all night when everybody else can't sleep. If you're the one person that's snuggled up in the corner getting some Zs, they're going to look at that as a reason to vote you out. Secondly, watch how they do sleep at night when you are finally sleeping because usually people that are in alliance together don't want to sleep next to someone they're not in an alliance mm -hmm. with. And the third thing is just try to stay in the majority. You know, you never want to put yourself in a situation where you're isolated or singled out or doing something different. Stay and do what the group does, especially in the early days. And that should keep you safe until you can build enough relationships that can, you know, take you through the game and weather, weather the storms.